Have you wondered what it would feel like to go from zero to 13 deals in just six months? Well, besties, I am so excited to introduce you to one of my real life real estate besties. This young lady entered into my life about eight months ago, and it has been amazing to see her just gain confidence, gain closings, and just make a difference in this business. Welcome, Shannon. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for being here. Okay, I don't want to waste any time because I know that the besties are listening. Like, wait, what? Zero to 13 in six months. Tell us a little bit about your story, how you got it started into real estate. Okay, so back in January 2023 is when I officially became licensed as a real estate agent. So I had just kind of been in a place where I was trying to figure out what I wanted that next step to be. I had been in HR 10 years at that point, and I just felt like I just needed to be doing something. You know, you know how it's like more, you know, it's more for you. I had got divorced and I met my new boo at the time and he was a carpenter. And I thought it would be a really good idea for us to kind of partner together. I could do the real estate thing and he could do, you know, his thing or whatever. So I was like, okay, God, if I take this exam and I pass this test, then we're going to jump into real estate. So I, I studied, I took the exam and I passed it on the first try. And I was like, now I'm scared, right? It's like, okay, so <laughs> now, <laughs> now I got to do it, right? So January 2023, I passed the exam and I was dual career. So I'm in my corporate HR job and I'm trying to do HR, I'm sorry, real estate on the side. And to be honest, like it was really hard for me. So I was starting to gain a little bit of momentum, but I hated to tell my clients like, oh, I can't take you on a show on because I got to work. Like that's the, that just hurt on the inside. I'm like, something has got to give at this point. So I'm like, all right. So I moved around a little bit in my career as HR and actually ended up getting laid off from one job. And honestly, I knew then that that was God telling me like, okay, Shannon, like you need to go ahead and take this leap, right? But you know, we we be obedient and disobedient sometimes. So I'm like, no, this ain't the right time. So I ended up getting laid off. I got a nice little severance package. And instead of just riding that out and going into real estate full time, I got another job like a couple of weeks later. (laughs) So you still, you still were like, and yeah, I'm still going to go get it. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, nope, I'm going to get a job. So I got that job and it was perfect. It was like really close to home. The pay was great. Like the company was amazing. Like it was really no reason for me to turn the job down. So I went ahead and took it. Worked the job for like three months and it was just something inside of me. Just like, I couldn't get comfortable there. It just wasn't gelling. And I'm like, okay. God. So I turned to God. I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing? He like, you know what you're supposed to be doing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So -hmm. it's time for you to take that leap of faith. So giving you some context, I'm making six figures and not to be braggadocious, but for you guys to really understand, you know, the impact of it. Which is you like, I was not like making a couple dollars. Like my life, I was good. Exactly. So good income, close to home, flexible work hours. And I'm in the process of planning a wedding at this time. So, and we just had uh, built a new construction house. So all these things going on. And I'm like, God, this ain't really the right time for me to (laughs) be leaving no job. But I was obedient. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take that leap of faith and, and quit the job. So I talked it over with my fiance at the time. And at first he was like, you, you sure you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, I think it's time. And he fully supported it. And once he said that, it was go time. I'm like, okay, I'm about to, I'm about to get my two week notice now. <laughs> and he's like, no, don't, don't do it now. Like, let's be, you know, strategic about it. So literally, uh, we probably had that conversation at the end of December, and I was gone the first week in January. <laughs> okay, so so you are you're speaking my language, and I and I just want to say, like, I understand that there are agents who you know, have mm-hmm. been through a career, they do it successfully. I, you know, you, Bessie, y'all know my story. I actually, when I passed the test, I was like, okay, if I pass the test, the Lord, I felt him similarly calling me out. I don't recommend, except, unless the Lord tell you to do it, right? Because I had no savings. I had no plan. I just knew, like, you got to know yourself. And I knew that if I had my comfy teaching job and it's crazy I pause when I say comfy because now I like I don't even think I could like eat tuna on what I was getting paid with inflation (laughs) right 
But I knew that if I had that in the background, that I wouldn't have pushed myself in the business. So I love your story. We have a lot of similarities. And just for context, okay, just so that the, the besties know, from January 2023, when you got licensed to when you quit in January 2024, how many transactions had you closed? Zero. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, L let's talk about that. Like, what gave you, uh, what was you thinking? Like, just say, what was you thinking? Like, nothing had closed yet, but you felt confident enough to go away from your job. Well, honestly, it was, it was God. I, I, I came, I came to give that. It was, it was literally me listening to God. And I guess my, my journey with God was, I was getting more into him and and seeking him more. And I really wanted to be in alignment. So with my, you know, I get up in the morning and I pray or just sit and listen out for him. And that is when it, it just hit me. Like I talk to God and I tell him the plans that, that I have. And then he tells me the plans that he has, like, yep. oh, this is what we're going to do. So I guess like over the course of that year, I was trying different things and I was trying to be in control. He knows the plans that he has for my life. And I just had to literally listen and really step out on faith. So it was a little bit, a lot of bit of that. And then most importantly, I just wanted to do my own thing too. Like I've been, I have been in my career 10, 11 years and I was building wealth for somebody else. Like, yep. you know, as an HR business partner, you see the, the bottom line, you see what's going on behind the scenes and you are pretty much the backbone of the company, to be honest. And I'm like, if I can do this for these people, I can definitely build my own business and leave a legacy and build something that I'm proud of for my daughter. So it was like all of that into one. And then finally just had enough nerve to step out on faith. So Look, okay. I yeah. love it. Did, you did it scared. <laughs> yeah, did it scared. Still scared, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> I love that. Like, I love that you said that because sometimes we can look and think, oh, they must have it all together or you're over that. Part. And I feel the same way, right? Like every single day that you go out as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you really have like, I think it pushes you closer to God because mm -hmm. and, and honestly, really, and you know, from being laid off, we end up having false, false hope and false security in all of these other man-made things. But you definitely have to like step out in here and, and just say, okay, Lord, I don't know what it is you have for me, which is also why you got to talk to Jesus and make sure that real estate is actually for you. Mm -hmm. I was thinking today, if it's just a fun hobby and you just like looking at HGTV, right? Something definitely should be pulling you here. But I love your thought process. So I'm going to fast forward to when I met you. And it was probably in, Jan I feel like you were newly out of work, yeah. January, February. So we used to do this thing called Coffee and Conversation with Real Estate Bestie the first Friday of the month. We don't do it anymore because of scheduling, but we do have something coming up. So just be listening out, besties. We have something that we're going to kick off in place of that. But you came to Coffee and Conversation, and this is when we were desperately promoting the Real Estate Bestie Retreat, right? I'm begging people to be there. And similar to you, I had no idea. Like, I didn't even know how to articulate what it was going to be, but I knew that God was calling us to do it. I knew that it was going to be a powerful event. And I knew that we had to get the people who needed to be in the room in the room. And I presented an offer where if you bought your ticket that day, you would also get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. So even before we get into the one-on-one -on -one coaching session, you hadn't closed the deal at that point, but you bought the ticket to fly to Dallas from Illinois for the retreat by yourself, incurring all of those costs. Like, what was your thought process to do that? Well, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm always, when I do something, I go all in. Like I, I'm, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to get to where I got to get. I'm going to put the work in. My biggest thing is I really understand like whenever you start a new venture, it's really important to get around like-minded people. Right. So I'm trying to soak up as much knowledge as I can, especially I have so much on the line. I didn't quit my job. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to, fast track the process for me to start bringing in some money because I got a baby to feed. I got bills to pay. So like when I attended, what is it? Coffee and conversations. I was like, oh yeah, this, this is right up my alley. So let me go ahead. I think it was, honestly, it was, it was a little expensive for me at that time because I, I wasn't in production, but yep. again, talked it over with my then husband, I mean, my then fiance and he supported it. 
So he he funded it and was like, go ahead, go do your thing. Look, so, thank the Lord for a good man. And I mean, like, okay. I, I know it's some, you know, we got some besties that are solo dolo, like you are living yeah. your very best single life. This is in no way, you know, minimizing the season that some of our besties are in. But it adds a whole different level of complex. Like when you're single, you don't have to involve anybody else in your financial decisions. You right. can just kind of move and go as as you please. But when you're in relationship with somebody, you have to consider. And sometimes when they're not entrepreneurs, they don't always understand. That was me with my husband, like things he wanted to invest in. I'm like, for what? What for? Uh uh-uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get it. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you watch YouTube. Like, uh, we do all that. <laughs> um, so for him to support you, that was huge. Yeah. That was huge. Do you remember what we talked about on our first coaching session? And I don't even know, like, our one-on-one session that we got to talk with each other. I just remember, first of all, you were so gracious because I was traveling and like I'm coming home and my flight got delayed and I'm like starting a culture session in the car and then finishing because <laughs> I wanted to honor it. But yeah, I think at that time, so you, this was right around the time NAR came out with the news of all of the changes that were happening, right? And I'm not going to say you were, you weren't scared about it, but you were like, okay, what do I need to know? How do I need to approach these conversations? So we talked through that. And we talked through, you know, just some very baseline things, mm-hmm. you know, scheduling, things like that. And I started following you on social media. And you told me, you were like, I had, you were like, I did not, you know, I haven't closed anything. I got my ticket for the retreat. It's all going to work out. And I remember mm-hmm. following you on social media and seeing like, hey, she closed the deal before. Like, I remember you closed the deal before you got to like the Right retreat. before. Yep. Right That's before awesome. the retreat. So that so was where really did the first close- for me. I'm like, go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, those are, so where did your first close client come from? So I am a member of a team. So I decided to like when I when I quit the job, in order for me to fast track things, I wanted to join the team purposely because before when I did it, when I was dual career, I was a what is it called? Individual or yeah, independent agent. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so let me get on the team, learn. And they were actually giving us leads at the time too. So my first closing was from a lead from Zillow. Yeah, but you had, but you were able to close it. You were able to absolutely. Close it. Yeah. yeah, and Zillow leads ain't easy to close. <laughs> no, and that's what I'm saying because, and that I, I say that because I think that sometimes people think, oh, you went out, you like you copped out when you joined the team because they just feed you leads. Actually, like this is why I don't do internet leads now. I I can afford to pay for them. But I don't want to chase them down and track them down and have like it's it's harder to nurture them, in my opinion. Not impossible, it's money to be made, but it's harder to nurture them than it is to like build from your sphere. So the fact that you were able to close that lead from Zillow from your team is showing me that there was skill. And I do want to point out because we're going to even talk about how, yes, you joined the team, you you joined accelerator coaching, and there's something to be said about like raising your hand to say, you know what? I want some help. Like, I you, could you figure it out on your own? Maybe, but what would it cost you? And I want not just in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of, you know, mental capacity. I see people all the time. I talk to people all the time that like, just in my initial conversation with them, I know exactly where the holes are in their business, but they're so headstrong on doing it all by myself that they're not inviting the right community in to support them. So what makes you like, why did you choose to to go a different path with inviting people in? So the difference this time was I actually, because I needed to fast track, it's like I had no choice in order to be successful. I had to like lean on other people. I had to push myself out of my normal comfort zones. I'm trying to be like, oh, I can figure it out on my own. And in my mind, time wasn't on my side. So who can I pull on? Who can I leverage to help me to really get to the next level? Like, could I have done it on my own? Probably so, but I wouldn't have been at 13 transactions in, you know, six months. So it was... (laughs) So it was just important to me, especially like after, you know, seeing you on, honestly, I met you on the podcast first and I okay. binged and binged and binged and binged. And I'm like, this is exactly, this is exactly what I need. So I got the support from my team, but it's, I've done coaching before too. It's just something about having a coach and having that personal relationship with somebody that has gone before you, like you just said, like you can see already like the, the, the holes and what I'm doing and you can help me to give me support to keep moving. So 
it was to me, it was exactly what I needed at that time. It was really, really a no brainer. No, I love it. I love it. Okay. So let, let's talk about coaching because what mm-hmm. had happened y'all is came to the retreat and I, I don't know about you. I mean, I think the retreat was amazing. It was. <laughs> yes. It was just different, Y'all right? missed it. Y'all missed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just different. And what, I think what was beautiful is that, you know, of course, we talked business, we talked strategy, you know, we had all of the things that encompass a real estate event, but God showed up in a mighty way. And, you know, there were just some moments, right, where you and I got to connect because the retreat is pretty intimate. We had 100 people when we do it again. Well, it won't be the retreat. That's a whole nother situation. But when we do it again, we'll keep it pretty intimate. So when you hit, I'm just sad, no besties. When you hear me say <laughs> that we are opening up the event, Shannon, might they want to get their ticket? You might want to get your tickets immediately. <laughs> you, you, you might want to get your ticket. But we were able to connect on some off path things. We have the Illinois connection. You're in the Chicagoland area. I'm from Chicago. And we offered the opportunity for accelerator coaching at the retreat. And you did not do it at that time, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, why? Why for? Well, it's scary. It is really yeah. scary. So like, obviously we see all the things that comes with coaching and we get so excited about it. But then I'm going to be real transparent. When you see the price, it scares you. Like, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? But honestly, like, when you think about the investment in yourself and the investment in business and the industry that we're in, that caught, like, that's going to pay for itself with one transaction. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So re rewiring my own brain to be like, okay, so if this is an investment and it's going to help you, you know, advancing your business like why wouldn't you do it you know what i'm saying so i had to get creative and really just re-engineer that process in my mind but i'm just glad glad yeah because because what happened is because we are like i'm I'm gonna tell people your business okay okay Okay. (laughs) so we are back on the retreat we are closing in it's probably a few weeks later and i i dm'd you and i was like why why your butt ain't in coaching (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and after a few and you and you ignored me and then I came back and I was like no like you really need to be in it and we just really talked about the benefits of it and 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 you joined right you yeah. joined so this is what I want to say about Shannon y'all because full transparency right there are some people who joined coaching paid the whole thing up front and I ain't never seen them again <laughs> You know, and and I don't know what happened. I don't know what probably happened, right, is that life happened and or time happened and all these other things that could get in the way. But you for sure have been a person who you are showing up. You're plugging into the resources. You're asking the questions. You're raising your hand. When we went to North Carolina, you showed up for that. And I definitely see 13 transactions later. And I, and honestly, the, the, the deals I feel like are like the back end blessing because I am seeing you just develop in confidence, develop as a leader, even being willing to step out on some other things God has told you to do. So just talk to me about how this coaching process has just helped assisted you along the past six months. Ooh, that's a loaded, loaded question. <laughs> So I'm going to be transparent because we, we all besties. Yeah. So I have done coaching in the past. It was more so one-on-one coaching. And again, I am a person that like feels like I need to do it all on my own. And I was not open to like doing it in a group setting, to be mm. totally honest with you. Because I was like, I don't feel like I can get that personal connection if it's a group. And to be honest, like, what if they ask a stupid question? <laughs> <laughs> like, I yeah, think- because I struggle with stupid people too. Okay, so <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I need, I need one on one. But so I'm like, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my part. And so started the coaching and met with the other ladies, and you really showed me the importance of having community, right? So it's almost like a twofer, right? So we get individual time with you, but we also get to learn from the people that's in the group. Somebody might be asking a question that you never even thought of before. Somebody may be experiencing some stuff that you haven't experienced yet. And then when it comes up, now you can refer back to something that you guys have talked through in the group. And even now that we're in this like 
cohort type of thing, we have even developed deeper relationships. So it was something that I was very close minded to, but I'm so glad that I was just like, okay, let's just go with it. And I don't think I would want it any other way. Cause it's like, yes, individual coaching seems like an amazing thing, but you are missing the community that you so desperately need over a, a six month period of time. So yeah. I just committed to, I'm like, okay, we going to do this thing. So I went through the real estate bestie Academy, used all the resources, and really was like, I'm just going to apply myself. I'm going to ask the questions because, true, I got, I got nothing to see. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Because why do? invest in it if you're not going to do it, right? And exactly. and I think that that is another like thing that I want to point out because even now, our application process, because as a coach, I've learned, right? There are some things that I've learned about who's going to be the best fit for the program. Because I don't want people to waste money, right? And again, I can talk to you very quickly and know if from a mindset perspective, not to say we don't have to make any tweaks, but from a mindset perspective, the way you're thinking about your business, if you're going to be a good fit. And sometimes it's just experience, right? And luckily Mm -hmm. for you, you have closed that first deal. So you have got a taste of, oh, I can like, I can run this money back real quick. And understanding how the investment can help fast track you. And that is a, an amazing thing. And I just want to talk a little bit about what you said about the group part, right? Because I was the same way like you. When I first got a coach, I had a one-on-one coach. I've done both 101. I've done masterminds. I've done group settings. And from the coach perspective, like me as a coach and me being coached, I a million percent prefer the group setting. And it's not just because I'm an extrovert, but what the, the point that what you're saying, like, I felt like even with my one-on-one coach, like, I just knew, I was like, stop talking to me. Like, talk to somebody else. Like, I just, pick somebody else. <laughs> get somebody else to like, like, I can still learn. Like, I, this is becoming therapy. Like, I'm already straight. Look, like, girl, why do you want to, like, it, it kind of just takes some of the pressure out in that community piece has been everything. And then we get to leverage and learn from other people's experience Mm -hmm. and to what you're saying, right? Because yes, you have me, the coach, I'm in there with you. I'm doing like direct things, but you now have a group of real estate besties that whether I'm there or not, you all will be in this business and in this life together Mm -hmm. from now to eternity. And I think that that is a huge game changer. I agree. And it's people that understand Dan, like I can't talk to my husband how I can talk to you guys about what's going on, what happened at work today, what happened with a deal, because it ain't going to hit him like it's going to hit y'all because y'all in the trenches. You know what I mean? So it's just nice to be able to have that as well. Yeah, I remember one of the first because y'all for our coaching program, we have this thing called Boxer where, you know, we literally can talk throughout the day, every day. And I remember one of the first things that you popped in box or you're like, Hey, I got this closing, but I have this conflict. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it it felt like a small thing. And I could imagine, like, I'm just thinking if I was to have that conversation with my husband, he might just be like, Oh, just, or just, (laughs) but we were able to really help you problem solve it so that you could feel good about the decision that you made while still showing up for your clients. So that, Mm -hmm. that is a huge thing. I agree. That's a huge thing. Okay. So like, what's next for you, Shannon? I mean, zero to 13 deals. What are your goals that you are working towards in your real estate business now? Wow. I'm actually working on getting my managing broker's license. So 2025, I will be getting that. Through coaching though, it's taught me that I really need to be running this like a business and not just something to do. So I'm really big on like getting systems set up, presenting myself well, and like getting processes down so I can continue to replicate the things that I work in and really being strategic and intentional about my business. But 2025, so I'm going to be stepping into being a managing broker. And eventually I do want to start a team down the line. So I'm very, very excited and very blessed. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for you. I'm Mm -hmm. so excited. And I'm excited that I get to do it with you because you signed up for coaching again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> honestly, honestly. So I thought about that too. So I'm in the season of really not moving until God says move, right? Yep. So I was like, okay, God, we are coming to the end. Like, what is it that you want me to do? So me being selfish because I have all the feels for you and for real estate besties, 
I was like, I want to continue, but I just want to make sure that this is, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing. So honestly, I went back and forth for a little while. Like, okay, should I just work, focus more on strategy? Do I just let myself, like I've been in coaching for six months now. Do I let myself have a little, breathe a little bit and like just, you know, give myself runway and then maybe come back the third round. And then I went to the mastermind. And even though it was like things that we have talked about, it was still different nuggets that I was able to pull from it. And I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. So she ain't done with me yet. <laughs> What's happening? So I was like, okay. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, and do this. But it was, God confirmed it for me there. So I'm yeah. like, okay. So we're going to go ahead and, and re-sign up. And honestly, I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to it. Because at first I was like, okay, I've been in it six months. What else do I need to know? Girl, it's it's so much more. Yeah, it never so, ends. Yeah. No, it never. And I even like, I think about coaching because I have like, I literally was just talking to Kim, who, you know, is my best friend and our director of operations. And I was just telling her, almost mad, but not mad. I was like, I just don't know that I'm going to be able to live this life without this investment of self and investment mm -hmm. of my personal and professional development. And I was sharing with you before I, you know, I got on this call. Let me just say this. This year, I have invested my entire teaching salary in, in my own personal coaching. Ooh, right? girl. Like, like literally. And even, and I'm, I promise I'm not saying that to brag, but when I think about I would not have a coaching program if I hadn't invested in coaching because she helped me understand, number one, that it's a calling on my life. And are you going to answer the call? There would not have been a real estate bestie retreat. There would not have been a NC mastermind, you know, all of the different things that we're able to do scared. And even when you're doing something scared, this is one of the reasons why I love a coach is because they give you proof that it's been done. So that's why you have to be very discerning, right? Just really to, because I have also thrown money at some situations that were not the best fit for me. But when you actually find the best fit and when I take it from, she just want all my money to know. <laughs> it's what I was curious about you. Like, what are you willing to invest in you? And if this is the season it is, and this is, if it's not the season, it's not. But I like from where I sit today, I don't know if I'll ever be at a place in life where I'm not, where I'm, I feel so evolved where mm -hmm. I'm not making an investment of self. Now, might that investment look different? You know, like I don't coach necessarily with a real estate coach in the way that I used to, but I have a mindset business coach, a visionary leader coach, right? So I do think that in different seasons, right, you weave in and out of these seasons, but I'm with you, like I, I'm never going to arrive. And I just wanted to make, I wanted to be real. I mean, it's an investment too. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was spending my time where I needed to spend my time and it was lining up with, you know, my goals. But I just wanted to touch on something too. So even though like the coaching program is amazing, it's important for me to be able to, to vibe with the person that's coaching me, right? So I just love that it's faith-based and it's real, right? It's not, it's not fluff. You you get down in the trenches with us, like we you're relatable. So it just it's just a really a really good fit for me. Like it's so many coaching programs that's out there online, and you know you see all the no. Like I already knew. Like when we when I went to the well coffee and conversations, I was like, oh she she's a real thing. Like she ain't gatekeeping. Like you actually share with us things that you share in your business, right? Yeah. How many people you know doing that? They might yeah. make a little template for y'all to use. These for my, this for my <laughs> students, but this what we using in my business. You know what I mean? So I can appreciate that it's felt, and I'm just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to even come across the podcast because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. So, yeah, I'm grateful too. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay, we <laughs> could talk forever. I know. <laughs> As we are closing out, okay, because there's a bestie listening to us right now that's look like heart beating fast hands sweaty they they nervous they like i may be on l1 deal maybe they're at 100 and think that they feel lonely but think that they don't need this and and we know that finding the right community changes everything what would you say to them as they're on the fence as you're on the fence i would say first pray about it first yep. and then i would ask myself where do i want to be in the next year and then I would look at the real estate bestie community. I would listen to the podcast, look at all the free stuff that's out there. 
Mm-hmm. And you will definitely see that it is value in this program, it's value in this community alone. And I think it's more than worth it to just go ahead and make that investment in yourself, but most importantly, in your business. Yep. And that's it. No, I love it. I love it. Well, Bestie, I am so grateful for you, Shannon. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, I just, uh, I'm not going to cry because, but you are definitely your proof on the hard days, right? On the days where I'm like, it would be so much easier to just go sell my little real estate and not try this big, scary thing that I don't know how God is going to bring it together. But um, seeing you and seeing your growth and the other besties that are coaching with us, you know, it's proof that, you know what, like you're loving on my daughters and that's where your highest calling should be. And I'm just so grateful for you. And if you are listening and you like, hey, I want to be a part of this, right? I want to explore and see what makes sense. You can apply (laughs) and answer a couple quick questions just to see. It, because we also want to see if you're going to be a good fit. Because like I said, you might not just be at a level in business or experience or whatever. But don't worry, we have resources for you if coaching is not the next best step. So go to rosemarylewis.com forward slash apply so that you can just check it out. It'll only take a few minutes, but don't wait forever because our official next cohort starts in just a few weeks. We're recording this in October of 2024. So definitely make sure that you head on over there. So thank you, Shannon. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> yes, I love you. I appreciate you. Y'all, y'all, look, if you, you, you not only, you won't only get me, you get Shannon too. So come on. <laughs> you need to get on in here. All right, besties. <laughs> love y'all. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and you have a real life bestie that you think it would resonate with, y'all do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that share button because you know what? We are better together. Make sure you share the podcast and I appreciate your reviews. I appreciate you giving me five stars more than you know. I'll talk to you next week.